Good morning, John. So last week I wrote a song about your inflamed nervous system using the instrumental track of Calvin Harris's dance song, Summer. Actually, I didn't. This is part of the Nerdfighter online video workshop, so if you can give me criticism down in the comments below, that would be great. And thank for you, and mwah. That was disgusting, wasn't it? This was a blatant violation of copyright. I didn't recreate that music, I just stole it. And yet, oddly enough, this is perfectly fine. We live in a brave new copyright world, and it's really weird, and for those people out there creating content and occasionally having to deal with these peculiarities, and the people who like, care about content, whether that be dance music, or books, or television shows, or symphonies, I think it's really important to talk about it. So this is the bizarre state of copyright in the US in four minutes. Intellectual property is the idea that you can own things that are not objects. There are three different ways to own intellectual property in the US. If it is a creation, something that you make, it is protected under copyright. This video, for example, is something that I created, and thus I own it. Well, in part by Nerdfighter LLC TM. Ideas cannot be copyrighted, although some of them can be patented. You copyright the thing you create, you patent the ability to create it. Though, obviously, patents are thus much more carefully controlled by the government. You have to go and apply for them, while copyright just happens as soon as you create something. The final kind of intellectual property is a trademark, usually used with brands, like the word McDonald's and the McDonald's logo and the phrase, I'm loving it, are all owned by McDonald's so that another restaurant can't go and pretend to be McDonald's. Although, look for my new restaurant, McDonald's. Come at me, copyright. Please don't, I, would, I, I don't have any money. Copyright started out very simple. I'm writing this here book, so you can't go and recreate all my words and sell it as if you wrote this here book. But in order to critique a work, you may have to use part of that work, which is why a thing called fair use was created. If I wanted to make a video about violence in cinema and wanted to use a clip from Reservoir Dogs to help illustrate my point, that should be and is legal. The only way to really know if something is fair use or not is for the original rights holder to sue the creator of the new media and have have a court decide one way or the other. So when I say it was okay for me to use that photo of a monkey because I was providing commentary on it and thus it was fair use, that is nonsensical for a variety of different reasons. The only entity that can decide if something is fair use or not is the court. Policing the days and days of video that are uploaded to YouTube every second is something that cannot possibly be done by humans, which is why something called Content ID was developed. Content ID allows rights holders to upload things that they own, and then it compares that entire library of all own media in the world to every single video ever uploaded to YouTube. That is crazy sauce. If something matches, then the rights holder can either do nothing, or get the video taken taken down, or even claim the video and get any type of revenue that, that that video generates as some sort of like retroactive royalty payment. This is why it's okay for me to use Calvin Harris's Summer. Content ID just claims my video for him and gives all of my revenue to his record label for the privilege of using his song, which is okay by me because I'm too busy to strike a deal with Calvin Harris on Thursday night. If you get a copyright claim, it's really not a big deal. If you think it is invalid, you absolutely should dispute it. I made a more in-depth video about all of this over on Hank's channel. Not really, uh, that's, Hank would, would do that, although, you know, dare to dream one day. The important thing to note is that this is not the best solution. This is not the most fair solution. It is not the most legal solution. It is just the most possible solution. And frankly, it's pretty cool. I get to violate copyright without ever having my YouTube channel in jeopardy. YouTube gets to keep from being sued out of existence, and rights holders get a new revenue stream in which to have bigger and better yacht parties. It's a win-win. And if you live in Canada, like I do, I have no idea if any of this translates. John, I'll see you on Tuesday, as a viewer.